Hello, we are the Entropy Laden Manifestations team of the Spring 2017 Physical Metallurgy Lab class at ASU. We are here today to present the fracturing and ductile to brittle transition temperature range of various steels. My name is Pooja Drivedi, and joining me are my teammates Julie Bennett, Kai Wen Zhang, and Badr Al Muhana. This presentation is on the ductile to brittle transition temperature of materials. Background will be given before moving on to the experimental procedure for the Sharpie impact test, which is a method for obtaining the data to plot the curve of energy absorbed during the impact with respect to temperature, then following the interpretation of the interpreted data, and finally the relevance of this phenomenon in the real world material selection. Materials experience changes in how they fracture at the temperature changes. There exists a transition temperature where below this temperature, materials will experience brittle fracture, and above it, ductile fracture. This temperature and the temperature range of this transition from brittle to ductile fracture is dependent on many things, such as microstructure, chemical bonding, and chemical composition. Here are basic images showing the difference between brittle and ductile fracture. Brittle fracture gives a rougher surface, typically characterized by a more sudden and catastrophic break. Ductile fracture metal shows necking. It narrows as the material plastically deforms, absorbing some of the energy from the impact. Note the difference between the engineering stress strain curve of the brittle versus ductile fracture. The area under the stress strain curve is the energy absorbed during impact called the material's toughness. This is what is measured during the Chappie impact test. How a material's toughness changes with temperature is what is plotted in the DBTT curve. The brittle and ductile fracture regions of the curve are seen on either side of the transition zone where the transition temperature lies. So in order to find the ductile to brittle transition temperatures, we need to use that tensor Olsen change matic Charby impact tester. It should be reflected as the Charby tester from now on. The samples being used are 1080 steels, which has 0.80% of carbon taken interstitial among iron. The ones, the one we we're using were annealed 80 the 1080 steels of radiant temperatures the samples were a bit prepared in, wa in water baths of radiant temperatures the water baths were you were warmed on hot plates for high temperatures and uh, centroid ice for lower temperatures the samples used for our experiment were held at room temperatures and also placed in ice bath. At the bottom of the Charby tester is an at, at, at which the switching arm will coil the sample with as the sample hits the and vial the energy dissipated from the swinging original potential to kinetic energy is the impact energy of the sample measured in foot pounds the com uh, the compilation of of samples impact the energies based on the temperature what uh, what gives the plant to find the ductile to brittle temperature range Here are two samples after the Chappie impact test. The faces of the fracture can be examined to compare with the basic images shown earlier. The left sample is a 1080 steel sample at room temperature. The right sample is a 1080 steel sample based in ice water before impact. Both show some plastic deformation, but the room temperature shows more. Lack of understanding in the relationship between temperature and strength of materials has brought tremendous troubles. On April 15, 1912, 
RMS Titanic sank into the North Atlantic Ocean several hours after striking onto an iceberg. The tragedy was believed to be because of failure of the steel beside the coal bunker. It was reported that before taking off, the coal bunker had already been on fire and was kept firing for days before the tragedy happens. The constant high temperature can be looked at as an annealing or aging process, which caused the hardening technique inside the steel to disappear. As a result, when the water was flooding into the ship body, the steel couldn't withstand the load of the ocean it's supposed to carry in an emergency. The steel wall yielded, and the water was flooding further in, and ultimately caused the tragedy. Nowadays, materials engineers looked at temperature seriously. The ship body is utilizing materials with ductile brittle transition temperature way below the temperature of the cold ocean. The armor of an automobile is designed to protect the driver even during a freezing snowy day. The wings of an airplane are designed to be flexible and strong under both the heat from friction and coldness of high place. Despite of its simplicity, the examination of ductile brittle transition temperature is still contributing to the society in an undeniable manner.